Now that your tests are set up, you're ready to write your first requirement. And the requirements up here basically state that it's kind of like an array, but if we read all the requirements, when you first start out programming, you're, you're typically reading from top to bottom, right? And you think in a very imperative list-based way, I got to do this thing and you build it. And then you realize, oh man, I should have read all the instructions because this could affect this. And so we're going to do that here. We're going to think and really exercise our brain and you'll get better at this. We're going to think about our requirements. For example, this one says they're unique. So I already know that JavaScript has a set based in, but I'm, I'm struggling right now to figure out how could I proxy to the array, but maybe have like a internal version of a set to handle uniques because that's built in a language. I don't want to code that myself, right? So a lot of interesting things here, but if I just can't arrive at something in a reasonable time frame, heck with it. Just write the test, do the bare minimum, and you can refactor later because you have a nice set of tests there that hit that API. So we're going to copy pasta this initial requirement actually into the test so I don't have to like think about it. Run our test here. We'll say mpx mocha watch. And mocha is super fast. All right, so it has a passing test. That's not good. Let's make an expectation that says the test should fail. So we want our array to have a length of zero. So when we start it off, it's empty. We'll just use an array. If we can figure out a set later with some kind of API, great. Two equal zero. And it's failing because there is no such thing as a length. And length is undefined, so it equals undefined. But to get this basically to work, we have to extend an array. And that'll give it a basic set of array functionality on on top, it'll give it a length method, blah, blah, blah. So we hit save, you scroll down, you can see it's already passing. Now at this point, you might think, great, I've written my first test. I've then done the second step of writing the implementation. So I'm ready to refactor, right? Well, I encourage you to be paranoid and do a really good habit of just making sure you can see the test fail. And you should have the easy ability to make it fail. So you can see that we can change it to, we say, we expect the array to have an item and it's like, no, it's zero. So that's, that's good. So if we can change it, make it see it fail. And again, it's really fast in dynamic languages to do that. So this is fantastic. At this point, you can think about refactoring or just go to other requirements. I don't really know how to make it better yet. So I'm just going to move on to the next actual requirement.